There are many things of interest in Concord, one of which being the Civic Access we are just passing. The Museum of Freedom is another. Today, however, we are looking at something else entirely. A small area I decided was long past due for a look. We are here to look at the Concord Speakeasy, tucked between a colourful looking saloon and what appears to be a plutonium pump. Maybe. It's small, yet interesting. So let's take a gander. So here it is, the speakeasy. It has a very saloon feel to it, doesn't it? And that is intentional. Over to the left, we can see the remains of what seems to have been some work on the posters that once hung on this wall. Torn down now, or perhaps worn away due to exposure. Directly opposite this, we find these three chaps. So construction barriers, cones, a shovel, drink, cigars, and at least one of them is naked. Some queer crack occurred here, I'll tell you. After the bombs hit. Yes, you heard me. I think these fellows, lying dead beneath the immortalized gaze of whoever the fuck that is, carried on after the bombs hit. My reasoning is actually pretty sound, but for now, based on what we see here, there's no way they did all this at 10 in the morning on a Saturday, irregardless of how illicit this establishment was. Behind them we find more evidence that they went nuts after the bombs hit. A trash can with a gas canister is thrown about here, and behind the bar we find another corpse, probably with these guys as well. It looks like they were in the process of getting more drink out from behind the bar, and cutting up some cigars with the scissors. The way all this stuff has just been taken out and looks looted is why I think this happened after the bomb set. The back room is empty, but does give us a chance to talk about speakeasies. Originally they were a more, shall we say illicit kind of drinking establishment. They sprang up in very large numbers when Prohibition, or as it is more commonly known, one of the weirdest fucking things America ever did, occurred. Usually bars wanting to seem hip or cool use the name now. But given the architecture of the building and this town's history, this one was probably authentic. Back out in the main area, I want to draw your attention to the discarded bottles and food, the canned food. I think these chaps here, and possibly those we will find upstairs, were responsible for this. It seems they were subsisting mostly on canned goods at this point, which could indicate their food was running out, which could be a cause of death, that or radiation exposure. This basement is surprisingly free from fuckery. There is one chair with food spread around, suggesting that someone was down here at one point. I also think they tried to cook the softball, and they seem to have raided the fridge. The door to the basement was broken down as well, so this may have been where a lot of food was stored, and they had to break the door down in order to raid it later, for supplies once the others started to dwindle. Heading upstairs, we take a left and go into one of the bedrooms, but not before noting the food on the ground. As you can see, the bed has been turned over, and a makeshift barricade of sorts has been set up using a mattress and a trunk of loot, which is very convenient for us. Based on the hole in the far wall to the right, it seems someone tried to break into this room from the outside. The fellow lying in the corner explains that. A soldier is huddled here, seemingly trying to defend themselves from the looters and our souls, of which I have no doubt the group below fall into. They set up a barricade and were ready to shoot anyone who came inside. The hole in the wall may have been an attempt to get in and avoid the door. The files lying around here may have been what they were protecting, or perhaps just their life. The next room is empty of anything interesting, except more files, which I suppose could have been theirs as well, but we will never know. There's also a door leading outside. Now, I don't think this soldier was related to the group that ended up on top of the museum. That is a different story altogether, and ties in with a different area, an area I will take a look at in time. Now into the room next to this one, which, to date, is one of the most fucked up ones I have seen. So, fuck me, right, here we go. So a fully clothed gentleman has lain with this lifeless, we hope, monstrosity. The bed is wrecked and there's beer discarded everywhere, and a knife, so you know shit was getting kinky. Another mattress is propped up against the wall, and it contains women's clothes. Now ruling this guy out as a crossdresser is a bit premature, and they could be the mannequin's clothes, but I think they could also be another woman's clothes. Another woman that may still be here in fact, but we'll get to that. Beside the bed are two XLs. Now, these things are rare, and never entered mass production, 
They were sold quite a bit on the black market, however. But it's still weird that this guy has them. If we are saying this was all post-war, then where did he get so many of these? It's not like the black market was running that well just after the war. I think these might have something to do with the soldier in the other room. Perhaps this was what they were carrying, and these drugs and druggies really wanted some, and killed them for it. So now, for this shit. So three mannequins holding machetes, and the most dangerous of all implements, a plunger. Standing over a bath of water with a decapitated skeleton in it. The head is now in the toilet, and a load of day tripper is lined about the place. Now this whole scene raises many, many questions. But my first one is this. Why is there still water in the bath? Surely it should have all evaporated by now. So the way I see it, there are about three options here. This was the woman who was originally in this room. The drugged up psycho on the bed cut her head off, then placed her in the bath, stuck her head in the toilet, and then placed the mannequins around her. Option D. She was already in the bath, dead, and he cut her head off and did the above. Option Tress. The mannequins murdered her and placed her in the bath and shoved her head in the toilet. I'd say it's either option one or three, though between you and me, I think it was three. So this was the Concord Speakeasy. Based on a prohibition bar, it was the home in the days after the war, to a group of drunken and drugged up shites. I still cannot figure out what they were using the shovel for, maybe sex stuff, but it appears that they exhausted their supplies while sitting here, and either died as a result of that, or because of radiation exposure. I expect the chap behind the bar went the same way. The food that we can find lying around the place is the remains of the supplies they steadily burned through. The bar seemed to have stocked a decent enough volume of beer, though it appears to have been exhausted at the end. We can see more evidence of this in the basement, where I think the majority of the emergency supplies probably came from. Perhaps the shovel was used to break down the door to the basement, and they were using it to try and dig out some of the other rooms, probably to try and find some more supplies. We find a lone dead soldier up top, who died trying to defend themselves. Possibly they were killed by the other people here, possibly from exposure or starvation. It could have been the files they were protecting, or it could have been the XLs. Who knows? They weren't the only soldier in Concord, and we'll take a look at the story of the rest of them another day. Lastly, in this fucked up room, a man can be found here, in the same shape as his friends, with a mannequin. That, the XLs, and the knife further complicate this whole scenario, and make me uncomfortable. The woman's clothes, along with the corpse in the bathroom, makes me think that there was a woman here, and this dickhead killed her. The mannequins were then posed around the body to make it all the more creepy and freak out anyone who came to look years later, like me. Or the mannequins were the ones to kill them all. Man, woman, soldier, drunken arsehole. Everyone. Who's to say that a combination of radiation, FEV, and a curse did not give them life? And they live it by taking it away from others. Or not. One of the smallest locations we have looked at, and the creepiest. I hope you liked this look at all of it. If you did like it, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go onto my subreddit, so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. A pound or a dollar, I ask for no more. If there are any rewards you would like to see on my Patreon that I don't have, message me and I'll take them into consideration. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates, or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.